around BVA. BVA member sets record at Turkey Day 5K. Story and photo, courtesy of CBS Denver. The article has one photo depicting BVA member Bob McAdams dressed in a running suit, meeting the crowd gathered to watch the 5K turkey race. A 97-year-old Colorado man has set a world record at the annual Turkey Day 5K in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Bob McAdams finished the 3.1-mile run in 48 minutes and 33 seconds on Thanksgiving morning. This makes him the fastest runner in his age group, 95 and older, to complete a 5K race. McAdams used to run regularly until he was 91 years of age, but hadn't run in four to five years. I started running on the treadmill at the fitness center, and the fitness instructor asked if I would represent the center in the next race, he said. I said, I can't do that. I'm legally blind and afraid of potholes and curbs, said McAdams. The instructor said, I'll be your eyes and I'll run with you. They marked a quarter-mile track at the fitness center for McAdams to train on that was not heavily traveled, so I would train on that four to five times a week. Together, along with a team of four to five runners from the retirement home, they crossed the finish line to the sound of cheering fans. One of the team members had a radio in which he kept race officials apprised of our progress, he said. While it wasn't an easy feat, McAdams never lost sight of his goal. I was really tired in the third mile, but I thought I could finish, he said. I knew there was a goal line out there somewhere, but it kept moving backwards. If I inspired somebody, that's great, he said. That's not my purpose, but it's great if somebody gets moving because of it, end quote. McAdams raced in the Turkey Day 5K last year, too. He originally beat the world record then, but because the race was not officiated, his time was never made official. Race officials said they will submit his time this year to claim the official world record. Father-son compete in bike race by Tracy Lester. This article has one photo depicting Rob Lester and his dad, Dr. Ron Lester, dressed in blue exercise clothes with their bike helmets on, posing in back of their bike prior to the bike race. Father-son disabled veteran team races on tandem cycle donated by VA. Dr. Ron Lester, 72, and his son, Rob Lester, 49, of Tucson, Arizona, competed in the 54-mile leg of El Tour de Tucson, a 106-mile bike race that loops around the city of Tucson. The 35th annual event attracted over 6,500 riders from around the world who found perfect autumn Arizona weather in a city known for its support of both cycling and veterans' services. The pair rode with the sponsorship of VeloVets, an organization dedicated to providing cycling opportunities to disabled veterans for camaraderie and fitness. The race was the first for the duo on the custom-built tandem provided by the VA a few years earlier to Dr. Lester, a blind Vietnam veteran. The pair came in 12th of 17 tandem teams and were squarely in the middle of the pack for the leg overall. Rob, a Gulf War vet, became interested in individual cycling for fitness and to address his service-related PTSD. He was familiar with the logistics of riding in a large group after participating in RAGBRAI in July 2017. Dr. Lester, who rides primarily to get out in the community, found starting the leg with 1,100 riders a bit more challenging. While the duo rides faithfully several mornings each week, Dr. Lester was thankful he and Rob had done a few long rides to get accustomed to the demands of the race. The pair initially intended to tackle the 76-mile leg, but decided on the shorter route as the race neared. Dr. Lester joined BVA in the 1970s after serving 11 years in the Air Force. He was medically retired due to his vision loss and suffers the effects of Agent Orange exposure. He is former president of the Southern Arizona Regional Group. Dr. Lester hosts a weekly internet radio show called Special Needs Watch on bpnradio.com. He is the author of two books about his life and overcoming disability, information about which can be found at www.drronlestr.com. Father and son plan to continue their morning tandem rides in anticipation of future races. El Tour was a fantastic experience, said Dr. Lester. We should only get stronger as we keep working at it, end quote. BVA remembers Pearl Harbor attack survivor by Chet Curtis. This article has one photo consisting of a headshot of Craig Kirkpatrick. He is wearing a collared shirt and sunglasses, and he is looking up into a camera. 
BDA is saddened to announce that Craig Kirk Mason Kirkpatrick Sr., 98, BVA member and Pearl Harbor survivor, passed away Saturday, January 13, 2018. Kirk was born July 4, 1919, in Bluff, North Carolina. Raised in Spring Creek, North Carolina, Kirk enlisted in the United States Navy in the summer of 1938. During his eight years of naval service, he served on six ships, eventually rising to the grade of Chief Warrant Officer before separating in 1946. He was a second-class electrician's mate aboard the USS Castor in Pearl Harbor Territory of Hawaii when Japan attacked on December 7, 1941. In the morning hours of December 7, 1941, Japanese fighters and dive bombers launched a surprise attack on the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. More than 2,400 Americans were killed and almost 1,200 wounded. The surprise attack was a profound shock to the American people and led directly to America's entry into World War II. Kirkpatrick was a young sailor serving on board the USS Castor, which was anchored in Pearl Harbor across the channel from Battleship Row. The Castor didn't take a direct hit, so Kirkpatrick had a front row seat to the day that will live in infamy. According to a story on WLOS-TV News 13 in Asheville, North Carolina, at the time of the attack, Kirkpatrick was below deck with his shipmates having breakfast when the air raid sirens went off. Quote, None of us knew what was happening, said Kirkpatrick, until a visitor from the bridge came down the stairs yelling, Air raid! Air raid! This is not a drill! He and his 130 shipmates rushed to their battle stations and saw they were under attack. I looked up and saw an aircraft in motion, said Kirkpatrick. Aircraft were flying so low he could see the pilot and the gunner. I was scared a little bit, he said, but hurried to the engine room where he manned his battle station. After the attack, he went on deck to see the aftermath of the attack. They really caught us sleeping, he said. Kirkpatrick and others survived the attack to continue the fight against Japan, but he has a lesson for us today. We had better not forget, he said. Speaking at an event at the WNC Military History Museum in North Carolina commemorating the attack, Joe Parker, the national president of the Blinded Veterans Association, said Kirkpatrick, who has been a member of the Blinded Veterans Association since 1984, is an, quote, outstanding citizen and has done a lot of community work and is well known throughout his community. And we are proud to have him in our ranks, end quote. He will be missed. BVA member accomplishes hole-in-one by Chet Curtis. This article has one photo depicting Howard Payne on the left in his golf hat on the golf course sharing a laugh with Tom Zampieri and Dale Stamper. BVA life member Howard Payne joined an exclusive club at the age of 94 by achieving a hole-in-one, a -a once-in-a-lifetime moment for any golfer. Mr. Payne's accomplishment occurred on the 28th of December, just three days after his birthday, at the Don Nabe Golf Center in Norwalk, California. It was exciting, a thrill, said Payne. The hole-in-one was a miracle. At 94 on Christmas Day and on the 28th, made the hole-in-one at 94 years of age, he said. The only other hole-in-one was made by me in August 1969, and little did I expect to make this second one. It was very exciting to see the golf ball in the hole on the ninth hole at the Don Nabe. Quote, Howard Payne is an outstanding BVA life member who is an inspiration to the blinded veterans in the Major Charles R. Soltes Jr. O.D. VA Blind Center as a volunteer and golf putting green instructor, said Tom Zampieri, BVA District 6 Director. Howard, at age 94, keeps providing younger blinded veterans with encouragement to keep active, play golf, and don't stop. He is a great example of BVA's mission, Blinded Veterans Helping Blinded Veterans. The World War II veteran has always been an inspiration for all blinded veterans. He was one of the original volunteers leading to the dedication of the Major Charles R. Soltes Jr. O.D. VA Blind Rehabilitation Center in 2011. When told it would cost $25,000 to build a golf putting green practice area, he went out and six months later had raised the money. He wanted to have a first-ever blind rehabilitation center putting green where students in the rehabilitation program could get some opportunity to learn golf putting, said Zampieri, and hopefully encourage them to go further. Payne continues to be an inspiration to all the blinded veterans who enter the Blind Rehabilitation Center for training and volunteers a couple of days a week. 
He always attends the October Major Robert Soltes Jr. OD Memorial Golf Tournament and plays at least nine holes. Howard is an integral member of our BVA and the adaptive putting coach for our Blind Rehab Center, said Paul Coombs, director of Major Charles Robert Soltes Jr. Blind Rehabilitation Center, BRC. He offers weekly adaptive putting clinics not only for blind veterans, but for spinal cord injury and community living center veterans as well. In fact, our therapeutic putting green located in our BRC North Courtyard is already named after him. Our inpatient veterans display a special smile each week when he arrives. Well done on your hole-in-one, Mr. Payne. We are very proud of you.